Autolite and its 98,000 dealers bring you Kathy and Elliot Lewis in tonight's presentation of Suspense. Tonight, Autolite presents the story of a man who had everything to live for, committed murder to prove it to himself. Joker Wild, our stars, Kathy and Elliot Lewis. Hey, Harlow! Why, it's Oscar, the super smooth and scintillating sedan. Super smooth is right, Harlow. I'm equipped with an auto light electrical system. Ah, there's none better, Oscar. And it's because your auto light electrical system is designed to operate as a team, with all units and component parts related by auto light engineering design and manufacturing skill, to give you the smoothest performance money can buy. I know how important the electrical system is, Harlow. Sure you do, Oscar. And you know, too, how important it is to have only Autolite original service parts used when replacements are needed. Because only these parts are designed by Autolite engineers, who design complete electrical systems used as original equipment on many leading makes of our finest cars, trucks, and tractors. So, friends, always insist on Autolite original service parts for your Autolite equipped car. It pays in performance. And remember, from bumper to taillight, you're always right with Auto Light. And now, Auto Light presents Joker Wild, starring Kathy and Elliot Lewis, hoping once again to keep you in suspense. Well, if you think I'm pretty, Mr. Malloy, I suppose it's your right to think so. Oh, you are, Rosalie. You're very... Very well. Let us concede the point. But let us also understand the circumstances under which you've made that statement. Now, here we are. Rosalie... Here we are, Mr. Malloy, with the great, vast Pacific Ocean, a uh, carpet, so to speak, under our feet, and the moon above, and... Rosalie? You must hear me out, Mr. Malloy. You know, my friends all tell me I have the uncanny knack to size up any situation, romantic or otherwise. Now, this situation, for example... Well, let's not knock the situation, Rosalie. I planned it very carefully. This takes planning? Waving to a lonesome girl from a long car? Bringing her to a place like this where she can look strange and mysterious on a cliff high above the ocean? And what planning does it take to slip your arm about her, as you've already done on numerous occasions this evening? Well, isn't it what you expected when you got in the car? Well, at first, I confess, I was very flattered, Mr. Malloy, being who you are, and having seen your movies, having heard you weekly on the radio. A famous comic personality like you, what girl wouldn't be flattered riding with Harry Malloy? Come here, Rosalie. Why should I do that? Well, I want to talk to you. I want to tell you something. Very well. Now what is it? Well, I'm a comedian. You haven't been very funny this evening. Oh, I know. You see, this is a very important evening for me. It's not a time to be funny. You might not believe this, but I've been looking for a girl like you. Some line. For a girl exactly like you. For the last several nights, I've been riding around the city just looking. I saw you, and I watched you for a long time. Watched me? I was driving along, and I saw you come out of that restaurant. I parked, I saw you walk towards the corner, and I followed you. Let me tell you this, Mr. Malloy. If I hadn't just missed my bus, you never would have gotten me in your car. Don't you like me, Rosalie? Personally, you're a big disappointment. When I get home tonight, I'll tell my mother and father I met Harry Malloy, and he's not funny. He's not at all like... No, no, you won't tell him that. What? Uh, no. It's very chilly, Mr. Malloy, and I've seen enough of the vast Pacific from a cliff. You may take me home now. Now, wait. You may take me home now, please. Listen, Rosalie, you say you uh, saw me in pictures. Yeah, every one. Which one do you like best? Are you taking a poll, Mr. Malloy? Just tell me. Which one do you like best? Very well. The one where you dressed up like a girl as a disguise. <laughs> Gee, you were funny. I saw it three times. <laughs> you know that thing you did that... Is that funny way you walked? <laughs> you like that, huh? Oh, it was a scream. I screamed, I know that. I guess everybody did. 
I'll do the bit for you. Come on, get out of the car. That's it. Now give me your coat. You mean it? Sure, I mean it. All right. <laughs> Gee, wait till I tell Mom and Pop. Yeah, there we are. Turn your head, Rosalie. I'm gonna roll up my pant legs. <laughs> oh, you. There we are. And this one. <laughs> you can look now, Rosalie. <laughs> can you whistle? Sure. Whistle. <laughs> yeah, I know just the tune. <laughs> oh, I'm a funny man, ain't I? Oh, you're a scream. <laughs> I just killed a girl doesn't change a thing. I create comedy. I stand up on a stage or my picture's on a screen or I stand behind a microphone and people laugh. How'd that girl say it? Uh, an uncanny knack, that's it. And it's been going on for 22 years. Think about it. 22 years of making funnies. Well, it's quite a nice life. Big cars, three of them. Big house, two of them. One in Palm Springs, one in Hollywood, money, lots. It's a nice life, but there's one problem. No one takes me seriously. Harry Malloy, comic buffoon, clown, nothing else. Even I began to believe it. Until the other day, I set up a problem for myself. Harry, I said, you make people laugh. How about making them cry? You create comedy, I said. Now, let's see if you can create a tragedy. So I planned it and I just did it. I pushed a girl named Rosalie off a cliff. She and a mom and pop. They'll cry. That's very tragic. You know, the next couple of days I felt great. Oh, you know the feeling. You set your mind to do something and you just do it and you tell people about it but how are you gonna tell anybody you just pushed a girl off a cliff then something else happened it was the third day after i did it not a word in the paper about rosalie her body hadn't been found so for a man like me a performer of 22 years you could understand the crack i was in not only couldn't i tell anyone what i did no one even knew it was done so that evening i didn't feel so good I had to talk to someone. I always talk to Liz. Harry lover, come in! Come in whenever you are! Freddy, Babs, look what we got! Ah! Look what blew in! Baby hun, where have you been? Kiss me, lover. We're playing a game, Harry. Come on! Uh-huh. Me and you, Harry. Oh, we'll kill him! Let go, Babs. I want to say hello to Freddy. Just wave. He'll understand. Cut it out. Liz, I want to talk to you. We're playing a game, Harry. It's important. I got something on my mind. Try it on all of us. We'll laugh, darling. Honor bright. Hey, Harry. I'm striped in certain seasons. I got two legs and I hibernate. No. What am I? Later. Freddy, I want to talk to Liz. It's the game. Now what am I? He's a bear in a pinstripe suit. Don't tell him. Liz. You look worried, lover. What's the matter? Let's go in the kitchen. For a drink of water, Harry? I haven't had an invitation like that since I was 14. How about that, kids? Harry just asked me into the kitchen. Why, I haven't heard that since I was 12. Let me know what happens, Liz. I can't remember. Please, Liz. Sure. Close the door. What's the matter, honey? I want you to tell me something. All right, lover. You name it, you got it. What kind of man am I? That's the game Freddy and Babs are playing. What's the idea? No, I mean it. 
I, I want you to tell me. You're foursquare, kind, courteous, loyal, obedient, and trustworthy. You're a lot of laughs, and I love you. You really love me, Liz? No, not really. But I'm a lot of laughs. In the ten years since I've known you, up until now, honey, just now you're dull. All of a sudden I'm not a big yoke, is, and all of a sudden I'm dull? Is that the way it is? That's right. I'm gonna tell you something, Liz. You don't know me. You don't know the kind of man I am. All right, I'll play. What kind of man are you? I got things going for me that nobody knows about. All right already. And? Inside, it eats, Liz. I got more to me than making people laugh. <laughs> Pagliasi, huh? That's an old bit. You stay here in the kitchen and sing. I'm gonna go and play with... No, listen to me. Lover. Please, Liz, just listen to me. Make it brief, Harry. Three days ago, I did something. Something naughty? No, uh, listen. I've got to tell you about it. I've got to tell somebody about it. Or, or it's no good. You flipped? I'm not just a clown, Liz. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I did something important, something big. This is the last bite I'll give you, Harry. What did you do? I made somebody cry. Harry. What? These are the jokes, huh? These are, these are the jokes? I did it, I did it! Aha! Guess what I am? I'm a fuzzy bear in a pinstripe suit. <laughs> See, Harry? Freddy knows what he is, so I'm going to tell you what you are. A comedian. You're a funny fellow. When you're not funny, Harry, you're dead. Let's have laughs, huh? That was Sunday evening. Monday morning, a very large thing happened in my life. It was served to me for breakfast with my eggs. The morning newspaper had it headlined. Girl washed up on beach at Malibu. Girl identified as Rosalie Park, missing from home for four nights. Identification by her mother and father. The street address was given. The part that would never get in the papers, of course, was why it happened. Which was me, Harry Malloy, creator of tragedy. I had to go see for myself. Rosalie Barton lived in a cheap little California bungalow. One floor, one palm tree, a germanium bed that needed watering. One thing was funny, though. Have you ever noticed the audience a tragedy gets, especially when it's for free? Well, the Barton house didn't have it. They should have been all over the lawn and onto the pavement. Neighbors, kids, the people who hop in their cars and come from all over the city to look in on tears. But no, nobody around. I parked my car a couple of blocks away and walked to the house, up the path, onto the porch, near the window. I looked under the drawn window blind to see what I was looking for. Hysterical parents, bewildered, grief-stricken, but I only saw a room, no people. Then I saw this, near the window, a high boy, and on it, a picture of the dead girl looking at me and smiling at me. I looked too. I couldn't see anything. Huh? They're still at the funeral parlor, her mother and father. Oh, they must be very upset, huh? No, they're taking it real good. I live next door. I came over to see him last night. They were taking it real wonderful. They didn't even cry. Oh. Hey. Yeah? Aren't you Harry Malloy? Uh, yeah, yeah, I am. What do you mean her parents didn't cry? Well, well aren't you? Why, sure you are. Didn't they love their own daughter? Why didn't they cry? Well, if they did, nobody saw them. Hey, what are you doing here, Mr. Malloy? Well, it happened. I was just driving by. <laughs> just driving by? No, seriously. 
I read about what happened. Uh, seriously? You? Seriously? Well, uh, yeah. I'm trying to tell you that I- uh, Hey, Jonesy, look who's here. I'm Harry Malloy. Hey, now wait. This is my neighbor, Jones. Jonesy, Harry Malloy. Hi, Harry. How are you? Hey, uh, uh, are you gonna be here a minute? I wanna get my wife. Get your wife? What do you need your wife for? <laughs> he kills me. Uh, wait a sec. Hey, Reba! Reba, come here a minute! <sighs> that Jonesy never does a thing without Reba. You'll like Reba. She's a great giggler. Yeah, well, I gotta go. Oh, oh, come on, stick around, Mr. Malloy. The whole neighborhood feels bad about what happened to Rosalie. Oh, stick around. You want funnies now? A girl, someone you knew, murdered. And all you do is laugh? <laughs> it's that funny face you make. Hey, here's Reba. Hi, Harry. <laughs> what are you laughing about? I haven't said anything. Some giggler, huh, Harry? All right, calm down. I want to tell you something. <laughs> Reba? Reba! Seriously, I want to tell you why I'm here. I read in the newspaper about a girl's being killed, and I was driving by. <laughs> he was driving by. Get this. Oh, uh, go on, Harry. I was driving by, just like a similar situation that happened to me once before. <laughs> no, seriously. Oh yeah, ran out of gas, huh? You, you had a flat tire, Harry? Well? Uh, go on. Uh, tell us what you're doing here. Here, get this, Jonesy. Go on, Harry. Uh, well... Uh, I stopped by because I saw this fellow who looked hungry. So I pulled over and said to him, Hey, you look hungry. He said, Well, I'm not hungry, but I would like ten cents for a cup of coffee. So I offered him a dime. <laughs> <laughs> Honest, I did. But he just shook his head. He wouldn't take it. I said, what's the matter, mister? You asked me for a dime for a cup of coffee, didn't you? He said, oh, if you don't mind, Mr. Malloy, I'd like ten pennies. I said, why? He said, I'd like drip coffee. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So I gave him six pennies. I let him drink it without cream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're the funniest man in the world, Mr. Malloy. You kill me. You kill me. Adelaide is bringing you Kathleen Elliott Lewis in Joker Wild. Tonight's presentation and read us outstanding theater of thrills. Suspense. Hey, uh, Oscar, sound your horn. Play your radio. Start your engine. Hey, what's all that for, Harlow? Why, all those operations depend on the sure, smooth performance of your Autolite electrical system, Oscar. And so do the lights, heater, electric windshield wiper, and lighter. They all depend on my Autolite electrical system, Harlow? Sure they do, Oscar. And what's more, your Autolite electrical system works every second your engine runs. That's why Autolite electrical systems, designed to give you the smoothest performance money can buy, are used as original equipment on many leading makes of our finest cars, trucks, and tractors. They're the best, Harlow! Right you are, Oscar. And, friends, treat the electrical system of your car to a periodic checkup at your car dealer's or authorized Autolite service station. To quickly locate your nearest authorized Autolite service station, look in the classified section of your phone book, or call Western Union by number and ask for Operator 25. And remember, from bumper to taillight, you're always right with auto light. And now, I'd like to bring us back to Hollywood soundstage, Kathy and Elliot Lewis, in Elliot Lewis's production of Joker Wild. Tail well calculated, keep you in, suspend. <laughs> oh. I told them jokes and they laughed. No tears, no tragedy, just funny stories. I was a murderer, and they were laughing. It was a good performance. Not exactly the one I counted on, but good performance. 
I left them laughing and begging for more. But still, there was this need, the, the need to tell somebody, to make somebody believe me. I'd done the biggest thing in my life, and a good performer deserves appreciation, an audience. The size of the house didn't matter. Go back to Liz. Try again. Hi, lover. Can I come in? When did you ever have to ask? Had lunch? No. Come on, I'll pour you some. All right. Harry? What? What was wrong with you last night? I tried to tell you, you wouldn't listen. Ah, oh, lover. Was I mean? Yes. Yes, you were. <laughs> That's my Harry. Drink your drink. Yeah. Here's to us, Harry. Nothing at all, hmm? <coughs> what is it, Harry? Uh, do you have this morning's paper, Liz? This morning's paper. Here, read this. About the drowned girl? I read it this morning over coffee. What about it? What kind of man do you think could have done this? Done what? Murdered her, pushed her into the ocean. Give me the paper. Where does it say she was murdered? Here, was pushed. Or fell. Are you on a new kick, Harry? What's the matter with you? Liz, do me a favor, will ya? Sure. Uh, do it my way, will ya? Let's just play. She was pushed into the ocean. What kind of man do you think could have done anything like that? A nut. Uh-uh. Look, I don't get this. What's it to me about this girl? It, what's it to you? I'll tell you what kind of man did this. A man of cold intelligence. A crazy man. A creative man. One who wanted to express himself in a profound... Profound? Oh, brother, a nut! You listen to me. I'll tell you what kind of man murdered that girl. I know. Now you just listen. It was getting funny, lover. I'll just answer the phone and I'll be right back. Hello? Hi, it's nothing, nothing at all. Harry's here. Oh, really? How was it? <laughs> I thought so. I'll have to go see it myself. What? What? I can't hear you, darling. Hold on a minute. Harry, do your London Bridges later, huh? Yeah. Where were we? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Just like that, huh? <laughs> That's the life. Sure, darling, go ahead. What? Oh, well, I, I guess so. I guess it could be arranged. Well, of course I'll keep my mouth shut. You... Wait a minute. Harry! Harry, I'm trying to talk to... Harry! Harry split, darling. I'll call you back. Try it with your head, Harry. You need a cold shower or whatever boys do when they act like this. What's the matter, lover? All right, all right. All right what? I'm getting out of here. You won't listen to me. I'll find somebody who will listen. Tell me, baby. I'll listen to you. It's about that girl. What girl, baby? The girl named Rosalie. The one in the paper, the murdered girl. Aw, baby. Answer me one thing. All right. Do you think I could have killed her? You? Well, answer me. <laughs> you? Answer me! <laughs> Shut up! Shut up, Liz! Liz, please! You? You haven't answered me, Liz. I'll tell you, lover, if you want to know. You're the seven wonders of the world. Life hits you in the face and you run to the joke file. A gag for each and every situation. 
That's all I am? Huh? I'm not finished. Go on. Face it, lover. Nobody takes you seriously. And that's why everybody likes you. Because you're no problem. Not this business with banging the piano, of course. That's a joke file I haven't been in with you before. But just one thing. Uh-huh. Don't get worrisome around me, Harry. Or you won't be walking around here. And that's it? Yep. All right. Wait here a minute. I'm borrowing your carving knife for a minute, Liz. What for? You see, Liz, there's no use in trying to tell you something. I gotta prove it to you. Oh, this is gonna be great. Oh, it could be at that. What's it gonna be, Harry? I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> That's my Harry. <laughs> yeah. What's my bit, lover? Yell, scream, run around? Let's just work it out together. Ready? Come on, killer. <laughs> yeah. Well? I'm gonna kill you. You said that, Harry. What's the matter? Are you running out of material? I'm not kidding. Oh, I'm supposed to act scared. <laughs> All right, Harry. Ah! <laughs> Just you wait. I don't know what you're doing, Harry. You better have a finish. Start running. All right. Oh, swell. Swell. Now I need a new lamp. No, you won't need it. That's the finish? You fall flat on your face? <laughs> oh, Harry, how corny can you get? You stopped doing that bit when you left vaudeville. Oh, my nose. It's bleeding, lover. Uh, move your head a little this way so you don't get it all over the rug, huh? Oh. Come on, sit up. Sit up. That's it. Give me your knife. Hold your head back. Don't be a baby. Hold your head back. Uh, I'm leaning back. I'll get a towel and some ice cubes. Hold your head back now, Harry. Here. How do you feel? It hurts. I'll put this ice on the back of your neck. It'll stop in a minute. Feels good. Sure it does. Liz? Mm-hmm? That girl, Rosalie. Oh, look, Harry, I what this there is, but why don't you go home until you get funny again? I killed her. Sure, sure. I did. Liz, I picked her up, drove her to the ocean, pushed her off a cliff. How's the nose? It stopped bleeding. Why don't you go home? I'm not kidding, Liz. I murdered that girl. <laughs> you still don't believe me, do you? No. I tried to kill you, too. You'll work it out. We'll practice sometime. Liz? Mm-hmm. Liz? <laughs> Don't you see, Liz? I'm not kidding. I never was kidding. I'm gonna kill you to make you believe me. Kill you, Liz. <laughs> With a minor, 49er, minor. and my name was Clement Ivey. Hi, Harry. How's the old kid? Kiss me. Oh, where's Liz? I'm forced to ask. In there. Right over there on the floor. On the floor? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hi, Liz. Uh, hey, what's this? A, a, a new game, Perry? <laughs> She's dead. Oh, 
we're supposed to ask questions. You answer yes or no, and we're supposed to tell you who did it, huh? That's an old game. Oh, it was... I did it. I strangled her. Hey, kid. You're taking all the fun out of it. Freddy. Huh. Look. At what? Her throat. I strangled her. No! I don't believe it. Oh, Harry, well... Well, not you! Liz wouldn't believe I could do a thing like this either. Look what happened to her. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. You will. Stick around for the police, Freddy. Number, please. Get me the police. Paul Precinct. Sergeant Thor speaking. This is Harry Malloy, Sergeant. I just call. Harry Malloy? The comic? That's right. I'm at five. Oh, Harry. Hi, Harry. What's on your mind? I just murdered a woman. What? I just strangled a woman. Several days ago, I threw a girl off the cliff. Now you're for strangling, huh? Have a nice party, Harry. Now, listen, I'm not kidding. I killed a girl. I killed two girls. Sure, sure. I'm a murderer. Don't you believe me? I, I'm a murderer. I've... Give me the phone, Harry. Give me the police operator. Police. I want to report a murder. Five, nine, five, East Channel Drive. My name? Uh, Fred Goodwin. And thank you very much. They'll be right over, Harry. Harry? Why? I'm quite a guy, huh? <laughs> Answer me! You're... You're quite a guy, Harry. Oh, Harry! Harry! <laughs> oh, listen to her, Fred. Oh, she's crying. <laughs> you see what I can do? Suspense. Presented by Our Life. Night Stars, Kathy and Elliot Lewis. This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for Autolite, the world's largest independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment. Autolite is proud to serve the greatest names in the industry. They are members of the Autolite family, as well as are the 98,000 Autolite distributors and dealers in the United States, and thousands more in Canada and throughout the world. Our family also includes the nearly 30,000 men and women in 28 great Autolite plants from coast to coast, and Autolite plants in many foreign countries, as well as the 18,000 people who have invested a portion of their savings in Autolite. Every Autolite product is backed by constant research and precision built to the highest standards of quality and performance. So remember, from bumper to taillight, you're always right with Autolite. Next week, the true story about the solution to a murder. The documented report of a policeman's patience, intelligence, and bravery. The man with two faces. Our star, Mr. Lloyd Nolan. That's next week on Suspense. <coughs> Suspense is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis. The music composed by Lucian Moak, conducted by Lud Glugskin. Joel Kowild, was written for Suspense by Morton Fine and David Friedkin. Tonight's story, Charlotte Lawrence was heard as Bob. Of occurrence is Freddie, featured in the cast were Lillian Bayoff, Gene Wood, I. Averbach, and Larry Thor, and Brian Kane. Autolite takes this opportunity to pay special tribute to the automotive wholesalers of the nation, who, this week, will be attending the Autolite Service Industry Show in Atlantic City.
This is a CBS Radio Network.